to solve the problem on particularly on the frame here so here's a problem of a uh, a simple frame it's actually a four story i think one two three four four story frame which is uh, planned like this there's a shear wall here actually glass okay okay so this is shear wall here and there are there are offset columns here but we are for the plan irregularity we are considering the second floor plan by the way you compute your your uh, uh, you do your checking uh, floor by floor and frame by frame you do not do it uh, just for once uh, you have to do it uh, uh, on one floor to the other from one floor to the other and from one frame to the other so if your frame is uh, if your building configuration is too irregular then it's actually hell no so uh, that's that makes you think that uh, the best way to do it is to make your configuration simpler okay let's talk now of first of the vertical uh, irregularity so i drew i drew the frame here on frame b so the first uh, uh the only given values here are the height of the building but of course uh, we will be needing this uh, later I think this uh, offset here is a point uh, or two meters, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So for the stiffness irregularity, all we need to to check is the uh, k of the story above uh, the second floor. Okay. So we are talking now here. Sorry above the first floor we're talking now here of uh, a story to story you can now check it uh, on, on uh, the basis of uh, the ground floor first then the second floor then the third and then the fourth okay so uh, without any computation can can you do the checking uh, of course if if the columns are just the same in size you don't have to uh, do the uh, absolute rigidity check okay so in the plan you will see that the columns are quite uh, the same in size okay so they are quite the same in size then assuming that uh, they are the same in size then you just check it on the basis of counting the columns okay so i count the columns now uh one two three four and the second floor is one two three four so meaning to say if I look at the stiffnesses and if the, the column size are the same, then there is no violation as far as the ground floor is concerned. On the second floor, you have four columns and you have three columns above. Okay, And if you look at this, uh, this is uh, greater than 70%. If K of the above is less than the K of uh, uh, the columns below then we can conclude that this will not be exceeded okay because 70 percent uh, of the k of the story above is just normal no so meaning to say uh, this is now uh, a normal uh, configuration since your columns uh, below are much stiffer than the columns above Okay, so your conclusion can be, uh, you can say that uh, there's no uh, stiffness uh, irregularity as far as the uh, columns are concerned. Okay. Okay, for the weight mass irregularity, we don't have any data to compute for the weight because the weight are not given. So let's just skip there. For the vertical geometric irregularity, we look into the in-plane offset. Okay. Uh, sorry, vertical geometric means uh, the, the dimensions. 
So H of the LFRS in a story uh, is actually the horizontal dimension of the lateral force resisting uh, system in a story and in the adjacent story. Okay, so let's take a look at the... Uh, okay, so we're just checking again this, the, the, the first and the second or the ground and the second and the second and the third maybe, okay? So if you look at this total uh, horizontal dimension here, uh, it is actually uh, stated in the plan that this is 18 meters. Okay, so this is uh, 18. Okay, 666. That's 18 meters. And then uh, for the uh, vertical. Geometric uh, irregularity, we multiply 1.30 of the horizontal dimension of the this one here. Okay, so if this is uh, 6, 6 and 6, this must be 12. Okay, so 1.30 of 12 is uh, something like... Uh, how much is this? 15.6. Okay, so we add the 3.6 there, so this is 15.6. Okay, so uh, we now we are now checking the second and the third because these are just the same. We don't have to check it. What's critical is this uh, second floor and the third floor. Okay, so we now check it. 18 greater than 50.6 hence there is a vertical geometric irregularity so for the in-plane discontinuity in the lateral force resisting element so this is the in-plane offset we just look into this uh, figure here uh, that's two meters and then the height of your lfrs at this level is 3.5 okay so we just compare uh, 2 is less than 3.5, therefore your uh, in-plane in offset regularity is not violated, okay? So because here it is says greater, okay? So it's less than. And for the last, uh, let's do the uh, capacity regularity. Again, we don't have any enough data for computing your, your, uh, your capacity. Okay, so when you're talking of capacity, by the way, clash, your column... You're referring to the to the uh, actual load capacity, okay? For columns, if there's moment, of course, uh, you make use of the uh, moment interaction diagram to compute for your p action. We don't have any any uh, information on that, so we cannot solve it. So for the plan irregularity, let's begin with torsion. Okay, uh, so delta at one end is compared to the uh, average of the delta at two ends times 1.20. Okay, so the, the given values here are actually uh, fictitious. So I just uh, placed a two values. If the shaking is in this direction, uh, I expect, I expect, that this part here is much more stiffer than this part so this will move this will move uh, a little bit uh, smaller or shorter than this one here so i just uh, pretend that i have a 100 millimeter uh, drift there and then a 40 millimeter uh, drift here okay so this is the uh, movement so if this happens class if the lateral drift on these ends are not the same there then we, there will be excessive torsion in the columns because this will will twist the uh, uh, will, will twist in the direction of the biggest uh, lateral drift which is uh, counterclockwise okay so this is now the average this is now the result of the computation 40 and 100 so delta m at one end, uh, say 100, is greater than 1.20 of uh, your average. 100 plus 40 is 140 
so this is 70 times uh, 1.20 so this is 84 millimeter okay, 7 times 2 is 14 yes 84 millimeter so uh, is this greater than this one yes hence there is torsion of the egg right okay so th that's how you you uh, conclude on that of course uh, if you talk of computation of uh, lateral drift uh, you have to go back to your theory of structures to compute for those okay for reentrant corner irregularity uh, we look at the the plan again and the is there a reentrant corner here yes there is an interior corner here in this column so if I'm talking of the, the uh, this direction now, my projected area is 6 meters, okay? So I'm, I'm referring to this uh, direction. My projected area is 6 meters. If I'm looking at this direction, fortunately, pareho yung dimension niya, my, my projected uh, area uh, width is 6 meters here. The same, okay? And then I compare it with uh, this horizontal uh, because this is the, the dimension that I'm referring to. So this must be compared to 666, so 18. Okay, ah, sorry. This is a re-entrant corner. Yes, tama, 18. So this 18 times 15% is 2.7. So 6 is greater than 2.7, therefore, there's a re-entrant corner irregularity. So though a lot of violations, no? So kung baga sa traffic, uh, ang dami mo nang babayaran dahil sa sobrang dami ng violation mo. Okay, for diaphragm discontinuity irregularity, uh, again, uh, we take note of uh, cut-out areas. So, is there a cutout area here in the plan? So, let's take a look. Okay, so there's an opening here, maybe for stairwell. So, I just get the area, 3 times 6, that's 18, and compare it to the overall uh, area of your enclosed diaphragm. So, that is uh, 18 times 6 plus 6 times 12. No? So, I just compute uh, the total area here 18 times 6 plus 6 times 12 uh, 50 percent of that is how much 18 is less is this less than this one here so here the conclusion is that there is no diaphragm discontinuity i think uh 18 is less than this uh, value here, okay? So the diaphragm stiffness of the story is not uh, greater than 50% of the diaphragm stiffness of the adjacent story. Okay, so there's no uh, enough data to compute for the uh, for this uh, part here because we don't have any plan on the adjacent story. So for number four, out of plane offset irregularity or what you call discontinuities in the lateral force path so there is no out of plane offset in the ground floor at frame uh, B so we cannot also compute uh, this part here for non parallel system there is no non parallel system irregularity so again we cannot uh, uh, qualify any violation to this uh, irregularity okay so that ends uh, the uh, the uh, procedure on how to to determine whether or not uh, there is a a violation on the configuration requirements for your building before you can proceed with the uh, with what type of procedure you you will be uh, using uh, you have to do this, okay? So, if there are any questions, uh, you, you can uh, raise them now.